Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Tika's online service. We're, we've got our few staff members in the back waving back. Thank you very much. We're sorry that we don't get to be with you in person, but we're excited to have this opportunity to worship and praise together, even though it's online. Um, so before we go any further, if you'd like to, you can let us know if you're new in the comments by typing in new. I know that's a, a new idea. Um, you could also let us know where you're joining from, as only a few of us are actually here in Tika. Let us know where you're joining us from, um, as we're all gathering together online. Tika is a place of belonging, forgiveness, purpose, and power, and we're excited to join in that this morning. So before we get into our worship, let's pray together. Dear Father, we're so thankful for this opportunity to gather, even though it's online. I ask that our hearts would be open to you, to whatever it is that you might want to speak to us this morning. Let this be an opportunity for us to grow closer to you and to each other as believers. We love you and we praise you. In your name we pray, amen. Let's join in worship together.
Father, we're so thankful we have the opportunity to be where you are, that you made a way for us to be in your presence. It's a blessing, it's something we don't deserve, but we're so, so thankful. I ask that we wouldn't let that opportunity go to waste this morning or any other day, that we would hold on to it tightly as it's a promise and it's a sign of your love for us. We love you and we praise you. In your name we pray, amen. So before we get into the rest of our service, we have a few announcements. And the first one of those is going to be about our offering. And if you'd like to give offering, you can do so online by going to scubachurch.com and by clicking the Give Online button, which is pretty simple for someone like me who does horrible with websites. We also might be continuing to have our services online only for the next few weeks due to the state of emergency. We wanna make sure that we're staying safe and that we're keeping our community safe. So please uh, check out our website at scubachurch.com. You can also check our Facebook page and a few other of our social media accounts for those updates. We will try to keep you informed as soon as we know what we're doing. We have a lot of our messages as well as a few other types of videos on our YouTube channel, which is Tika Church. If you'd like to, you can check those out. You can subscribe if you want more of that content. You can hit the bell for notifications. And if you really enjoy it, you could give it a like. And for uh, those of you who might want to listen to the translated message, we are going to have that on our Facebook and our YouTube page. So you can find a link to that in the comments if you'd like to check that out. We have incredible people who do that translation for us and I cannot even imagine all of the work that has to go into it. So before we get into our actual message, we have someone to introduce. We have Pastor Josh, who's going to be giving us our service today. So I'm going to hand it over to him. Thank you, Chelsea. I am very excited to be sharing with you all again this morning. This is my fourth time getting to share with you, and it is the third time getting to share with no one here. Um, I guess having to share, not getting, because I really wish that I could have some of you in here with me. Um, but I'm happy to be able to be with you online anyway. So let's go ahead and get into the message. Um, we have been talking about how Joseph had received dreams that one day his family would bow to him and also about how his brothers didn't really respond well to that situation. They hated Joseph because of his dreams and because of the favoritism that their father showed toward him. This led to Joseph's brothers almost killing him, but they settled on just selling him as a slave instead. Pastor Chelsea walked us through the many unfortunate situations that followed after that. Joseph became a servant in the house of an Egyptian officer named Potiphar. He found favor with Potiphar and was appointed as an overseer of Potiphar's house until he was framed by Potiphar's wife and um, after refusing to have an affair with her. Then he was thrown in prison. While in prison, he found favor with the warden and became an overseer in that prison. Eventually, two other men who had previously served for the pharaoh arrived in that prison the cupbearer, and a baker. They both woke up from strange dreams and wanted to know their meaning. Joseph received an interpretation of the dreams from God and asked only to be mentioned to the Pharaoh in return because for all intents and purposes, Joseph was an innocent man. There really was no reason for him to be in that prison in the first place. The cupbearer returned to his position with the Pharaoh and forgot to mention Joseph. Joseph remained in a prison that he did not belong in for two more years until the Pharaoh also had a dream that he needed to be interpreted. The cupbearer then remembered Joseph and then Joseph was brought to the Pharaoh. God once again gave Joseph an interpretation of the dream, a warning of an upcoming famine. Through the interpretation of the dream, God gave Joseph favor in the eyes of the Pharaoh. Joseph became the Pharaoh's second in command and helped Egypt prepare for the famine. 
Years passed, and Joseph's brothers finally returned into the picture. The famine was widespread all the way back to Canaan, where his family lived. They had come from their home to Egypt in search for food. Last week, Pastor Chelsea focused on how the brothers, on the brothers and how, how, sorry, I cannot speak this morning, but we're going to roll through it anyway. I think I'm getting, uh, I'm catching what Pastor Chelsea has. Um, Last week, she focused on the brothers and how they had changed. They were not the same as they were when they sold Joseph away. Years had passed. They had allowed themselves to develop into better people that were more responsible for their actions. Joseph put this to the test, creating a situation where the youngest brother, Benjamin, would be taken as a servant. We pick back up today in the aftermath of that test. We'll start with the first point. With repentance can come restoration. Genesis 45, 1 and 2 say, Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. He cried, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud so that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. As Pastor Chelsea pointed out last week, the brother who stood up for Benjamin the most was Judah. This was the same brother who was the most instrumental in selling Joseph away. He had been soured by his father's favoritism toward Joseph. Most likely, Benjamin shared a bit of that favoritism. He was the last child to be born, and as far as their father Jacob knew, Benjamin was the only child he had remaining from his late wife Rachel, the wife he had loved the most. But Judah was advocating his life in place of Benjamin's. It had probably been over 20 years since Joseph had been sold away. Now Joseph could see that the brothers before him were changed men that evil and hate had been removed, and what remained was a family. This moved him to tears. Let's continue starting in verse 3. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. There is a beautiful thing that can happen when we allow ourselves to change for the better. Nobody is perfect, and I'm sure that all of us have done something that hurt someone else at one point in our life or another. However, When we allow ourselves to submit to God's will, he purifies us and helps make our actions reflect his character. As our character becomes more like Christ, those past hurts and broken relationships can become restored. A great example of this in the Bible is Paul. The person who Paul had a broken relationship with was Jesus himself. Paul was a Pharisee, and he had been persecuting Christians. He was an instrumental person in the imprisoning and death of many. Paul, who at the time was called Saul, was on his way to commit more acts when he, heard, when he had an encounter with Jesus. Acts 9, 3 through 6 says, As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. After that encounter with Jesus, Paul changed his life completely. He changed the way he acted and thought. He aligned his life with God's will and pursued God's character. He went from being one of Christianity's biggest villains to one of its biggest allies. Jesus called him a chosen instrument to reach the Gentiles. He ended up writing 13 books of the Bible. If a lifestyle that opposed Jesus can be redeemed, then surely Jesus can redeem our worldly relationships as well. Sadly, that doesn't mean that this will always happen. Depending on the hurt and the way that the relationship was broken, that restoration might not come easily. Honestly, it may never come. It is up to each individual to choose. 
In those situations, the most we can do is keep seeking personal restoration from God and let him work in the relationship as we work on ourselves. And we need to keep our hearts open to forgiving and restoring relationships for those pursuing God's character. In Joseph's situation, he saw the true conviction and repentance that his brothers had. He was ready to forgive them and rejoin in a family relationship. He also saw what God had done in his own life through that situation. That brings me to my next point. God works in our bad situations. Verses 5 through 8 say, And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in these land for two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you for a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all of his house and ruler over all of the lands of Egypt. In every bad situation that Joseph was in, God granted him favor and protected him. And Joseph was able to look back on this and see it. From Potiphar's household to the prison to Pharaoh's palace, God was right there every step of the way with Joseph. God didn't create the negative situations that Joseph was put through. Those were brought on by the evil actions that others committed. But God ultimately used those for the good of Joseph and for his own glory. The goodness of God is so much greater than the evil of man. This wasn't just a one-time thing that God was only willing to do for Joseph either. Once again, this connects to Paul and the New Testament. Paul wrote in Romans that God works in us just the same. Romans 8.28 says, And we know for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. That doesn't mean that we will never face hardships. That's a claim that the Bible will never make. What it means is that negative situations uh, in them, that God will be with us. Regardless of what happens, God is moving us forward. If we are in his will, he will work in our bad situations. We will eventually be able to look back like Joseph and see how God strengthened us in the midst of everything. In the next chapter, we see that Joseph invites his entire family to move to, the, to a nearby land. He is also finally reunited with his father, Jacob. We see here the fulfillment of the dream God gave to Joseph back in chapter 37. At the age of 17, God told him that one day his family would bow to him. If we have learned one thing throughout the book of Genesis, it's that God always keeps his promises. Joseph had no idea how that was going to happen. He certainly never thought that the dreams he had meant he would one day be ruling over his family as the governor in a foreign country. He also certainly never thought it would all be instigated by his brothers wanting to kill him. Despite all these actions that were meant for evil, Joseph was put in, uh, Joseph was put in front of the right people at the right time. And instead of dying by his family, he was the one who saved his family. Using his status and his resources, he was able to take care of and provide for his family during the terrible famine his family was able to survive. They continued to grow into a great nation because God is faithful and he always keeps his promises. Is there a relationship in your life right now that you may have damaged? This next week, let's pursue God's will in our life. We should be allowing our character to become more like his. Let's pray that God restores us and that others can see that renewing work that God is doing in us. Is there a bad situation that God has delivered you from? Let's thank him for that and reflect on how he was with you in the midst of all of that. Maybe you're still in a bad situation. Know that as you follow God's will in your life, he will guide your steps and use whatever bad may come for good. You can find peace in knowing that you never have to go through anything alone. He will be there with you working it out for your good. Is there a promise from God that you're still waiting on? Remember God's faithfulness. His word is true, and he always keeps his promises. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, 
I just thank you for today, and I just thank you that we have these instances in the Bible to look back on and see your faithfulness and see how you take care of us, even in the bad. I pray that you be with us in this next week um, and help us just grow closer to you and pursue your character to um, better the relationships we have with people. And I pray that you be with those in bad situations and just help guide their steps and help them know that they're not alone and that you're always with them, Lord. We thank you, and in your name we pray, amen. All right, well, before we go, there is one more thing that we need to do. Say no, touching scuba, changing the world.